I'm super excited because of that neon sign right there. Isn't it freaking awesome? Just got to do a few more touch-ups, but so far I'm super stoked about this new studio setup. You guys probably saw this with the recent live stream that I did with Gerald Undone on YouTube and Facebook. And actually that's what we're talking about in today's video is the app that I use to live stream. It's called the Melon app. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about how to use Melon app, some of the pros and cons, and some things that I think could use some improvement. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today, I'm going to be talking about a new streaming app called Melon App, and it's developed by a group of people that work for Streamlabs, which is owned by Logitech. Melon App was developed by this team because they wanted to create an easy to use streaming app for content creators that could connect with other people and just be able to jump on quickly and have the streams be pretty seamless. And I have to say, it was super seamless to stream with Gerald Undone last week to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. The best part about Melon App is that it's completely web-based which means creators don't have to download the app. I didn't have to download the app to my computer. Gerald didn't have to download it to be able to stream. It's just in your web browser. The studio's there. It's really easy to use. And right now you can get started with Melon for free. There is some limitations with the free plan, such as watermark and a limited number of streams that you can do. But if you really like it, it's actually decently priced right now for the early bird discount and you can get HD streaming, you can record, you can have up to six guests, you can do brand customization. We're going to get into all of this in the video. So I'm going to start with the things that I love about it that I think that you guys would find useful in terms of how to use it and some room for improvement. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So my favorite part about Melon is the great and easy to use user interface. When you first log in and sign up and you enter the studio, it's really easy to use. At the bottom, there's the area where you can easily connect your microphone, connect your camera, you can show the live feed chat, you can screen share, you can also edit and customize the screen and go live. It has everything at the bottom. It's very intuitive to use. And it was super easy to connect my high quality camera for the live stream. So what I used for the live stream was my Canon EOS R and I used the Flint 4K Plus capture card to convert the video signal of my Canon into a webcam. And then this just connects to my MacBook Pro here via USB and the Flint 4K Plus connects into the Canon EOS R from an HDMI to mini HDMI cable. And so when I went to select my webcam, I just was able to select my Canon EOS R using the capture card. And for the stream's audio, I just use the exact same setup that I have right here, the Rode NT-USB Mini, which connects to my computer via USB, and I can just select it in Melon App as the audio source and it's a great high quality microphone and it's pretty decently priced as well. And in terms of the output of the audio so I could hear Gerald, I used my AirPods and I just plugged them in and it was great because I was able to hear him and there was no audio interference from my speaker. So it's really important to wear headphones when you're streaming. All of the gear that I used for the live stream, I've linked down to it in the description box below. And up here is a video on how to do your own high quality live stream setup. So another thing you might be wondering about streaming is brand customization. When you use the pro version of Melon app, you can do a lot of different customizations of the settings. So down at the bottom, you just hit edit screen and you'll be able to edit the name that's displayed. So when you're streaming and there's a name up in the corner of your window. So I just put Premiere Gal, but you can edit this to any name that you want. You can also choose to have HD streaming on and you need to have the pro plan to be able to stream in HD. You can also turn on the ability to record the stream if you want to be able to record it and reference it in the future, which is what I did. You can also choose whether or not you want the participant names to be shown during the stream. During my stream, I had the participant names on 
And one thing that I would like to see from the Melon app team is the ability to customize how this looks. So updating the font and the color and maybe placing it just below the subject. So that way it's not right up in the corner of the screen. I would have liked to be able to move that position. Another really cool thing that you can do is you can upload your own logo with the pro plan. So I uploaded the gal logo and it was up in the corner of the screen during the whole stream. So immediately people saw, oh, this is gal stream. So it's great for branding. Of course, you don't need to have your logo at all. It was just an option. Another thing you can do is choose to have a banner up on the screen. Now this was okay, it was almost like a lower third, but what I would really like to see is to be able to add in our own custom lower third animations. So I didn't have this on during the stream, but what I would really like to be able to do in the future is have my own logo graphics pop up. And I did let the Melon team know that I would love to see this and they definitely thought it was great feedback. So definitely keep a lookout for animated lower thirds in the future in this Melon app. Also, in the beginning of my stream, I had a ticker at the bottom with kind of ticking text that just reminded people uh, to leave their questions for Gerald and myself in the chat box. So that way people are reminded constantly to engage with the stream as it's happening. You don't have to have this on, you can always turn it off. And I was able to turn it off halfway through the stream so you didn't see it after some time. And the last thing you can do with the settings is change the background. So if you're playing around with the layout of the stream, the background can be just a solid color or you can upload your own image, custom artwork. It's just kind of like a wallpaper in the background. And I would recommend having something that's not too busy because you don't want it to conflict with the different screens that you have at the same time. What's really cool about the Melon app, it's really easy to share your screen as well. So if you wanna share your entire desktop, you can do that, or you can just share a window. For example, I just shared a window of Gerald's YouTube channel that I could then pull up during the stream and you could have myself, you could have Gerald too, and the screen up at the same time or just the screen itself. And it's really intuitive to play around with the different layouts. One thing I would like for the screen sharing component is the ability to share a pre-recorded video instead. So instead of screen sharing, the ability to add a, a movie file that can play during the stream. So I think that's something that could be added in future versions of Melon. And there's scheduling too. So you can easily schedule your streams to go out to whatever platforms you connect to. So I scheduled the stream about five days in advance on both Facebook and YouTube. And in Melon app, I just typed in the title and the description and it auto posted and auto alerted my subscribers and followers on Facebook and YouTube that I had planned this stream. And that was really cool because I was able to plan it in advance and help promote it. One of my favorite components was the onboarding experience for bringing a guest on the show. With Gerald, it was super easy. I just had a link for him to join the stream. He didn't have to download anything. And he just opened up that link and it had uh, the setup of his audio and video, making sure that it was working. And then he could join the stream. And we were not live at first. He was just kind of in like a waiting room with me and we were able to do the setup. And actually the setup I thought was gonna take like 15 minutes to test. And because it was so easy to use, we ended up just having a tech setup for like one minute. So we ended up going early to the stream, which is actually a great thing. And so for this stream, I ended up just being on camera first, introducing Gerald. And when I wanted to show him, all I had to do was click on his video on the left and say show on stream. And then he automatically appeared to the right of me and we were perfectly in the split screen and I didn't have to do any customization like I would have to do in OBS. It's like super easy to use. So as I mentioned before, I streamed to Facebook and YouTube for the Gerald Undone interview. And what was great about this is we were able to capture the attention of both audiences. So if one person was on Facebook or another audience was on YouTube, you know, or they prefer YouTube or something, you could capture both of those audiences. And if you have a Twitch account in Periscope, you could also stream to those platforms as well. So you can stream up to four different platforms at once. And all of the comments that are left on the live stream on all of those platforms are aggregated into the chat box window in the Melon app. An interesting thing that happened during our stream though, is that the comments didn't come in for some reason. And I wrote to Melon app and I told them, hey, like the comments are, didn't come in on the stream. Is it just a bug? What happened? Because at first when we were streaming for like 
10 or 15 minutes or so, I saw no comments at all. And I thought nobody was watching the stream because I hadn't streamed in a while. It's like, great stream, Kels. Nobody's tuning in. Thanks, Gerald. Sorry that nobody's watching. But, you know, it was fine. It turned out that the there was just some sort of bug and the Melon team is working on it. And I was actually able to just hold up my phone and look at the YouTube chat and answer questions that way. So it wasn't a big deal. But at first I was like, Jesus, nobody turning in. Nobody wants to watch Gerald. Uh, but yeah, that was really cool. Another thing that's really cool to the right of that is a private chat. So if you need to message your guests privately, you can just message them there. And I think that that's really useful, especially if somebody's audio goes out, which didn't happen in our stream. But you can just say, hey, we're about to go live right now. Make sure your mic is on. You can just use the private chat for that. And lastly, another thing that I love about this app is that they make it free at first and the pricing is really reasonable. So definitely take advantage of the early bird discount. You'll find the pricing in my description box below, which is subject to change, but definitely take advantage of it now and see if it might be a useful tool for you. The Melon app team is also super responsive to feedback. So if you have any suggestions, for the future development, just leave a comment below and I'm sure they're gonna read it and be super grateful for that. And another thing I just wanted to say is that I'm super grateful that Melanap reached out to me and said, hey, we have this tool because it definitely inspired me to go live again. I hadn't gone live, gosh, on YouTube for probably at least a year and the app was just so easy to use that I was like, why not? Let's give it a try. And especially now during this time, it was nice to connect with Gerald who, is in Canada, far away, and I. it was nice to be able to connect with another content creator. And stay tuned in January 2021, because we'll have some more guests on the show, and I'll, I'll try to go live at least once a month. So again, my link is in the description. All of the gear that I use for live streaming is down below. Happy to uh, answer any questions you guys have about your live setups, and um, yeah. So that's it for today's video. If you guys found it useful, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It helps me uh, just know if you guys want more content like this. I know live streaming is a hot topic right now. And also please subscribe if you wanna stay tuned for more updates, but you have to be sure to hit that notification bell. Otherwise you won't be notified when I publish new content on the channel. So yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys next time.